Hello, this is Compound Interest Stock Guy, and today we're going to be talking about the top 10 companies for March 2019. So these are my picks. Uh, before we get into this, I want to ex explain I'm not a financial advisor. This is just for entertainment information purposes. Do not buy or sell a stock based on any of this uh, analysis that I do. Uh, buy after you did your research and your due diligence and you confirmed that you think it's a buy and you like the company all right so I want to get into this uh, so if you're new to the channel it'd be cool if you just subscribed I do videos on cannabis and commodities and some other stuff from time to time uh, so yeah as well if you give me a thumbs up I appreciate it Give me a thumbs down if you dislike it. If you dislike it as well, leave me some comments. I'm cool with some criticism. That's all good. Um, so yeah, let's get into this. So this is uh, New Cannabis Vendors. I love this website. It shows me the top revenue companies and it compares them with each other. There's a whole host of other things that you can do. You can see the tier one. You can see the tier two, tier three. So it'll list them from the the highest market cap to the lowest market cap when you go into these ones and as well as in the American cannabis operator or the global cannabis stock index so that's pretty cool uh, uh, Alan Bronstein he's involved with this website so yeah let's do this all right so my number one number 10 pick I mean is uh, Kush bottles okay so the ticker is KSHB on the OTCQB and I picked them as number 10 because I'll tell you this uh, Danny Moses from the big short he's he's getting involved with these uh, Kush bottles and th th these revenues are getting pretty significant right 25.3 million um, on a quarterly basis uh, you times that by four that's over 100 million I mean that's some pretty serious numbers and they're just touching the surface. They're not uh, a global company yet. They're starting to get into Canada, but as well as uh, Tim Seymour from uh, CNBC Fast Money, he's he's working with these guys. Just it's it's a new announcement that just came out. So I don't own the stock, but I've been trying to get in. Uh, I'd like to get in around five dollars US. I don't know if I'll be able to. I'd like to pick up a hundred shares. Um, maybe I'll just pick up 80 at six dollars maybe I'll see so yeah so that's my num number 10 so you see they did 25.3 million US and 186% uh, year-over-year growth and uh, April 15th will be their next reporting that says says on that all right so number nine is a uh, is the number one company in the USA for revenues is a uh, MedMen uh, ticker uh, uh, MMNFF in uh, OTC and MMEN in the CSC and uh, they did 29.9 million last quarter it just was announced yesterday it's pretty impressive um, the pro forma based on an acquisition is somewhere like 45 million US so that's pretty crazy that's close to like 65 million Canadian that's that's some pretty big numbers that's bigger than Aurora's so there's been some money but this company makes more money than Apple per square feet in their retail stores so that's that's something to think about uh, I just picked up a hundred shares just recently I like the company uh, I think they'll they'll go higher I don't know how long I'll hold them for but I intend to make a little bit of money on MedMen so they're in my number nine pick. Uh, Zena is a uh, Zenabis, and that's my number eight pick. Uh, Zenabis is uh, they're a new IPO, kind of like a reverse takeover from this Bevo Agro, and Bevo Agro was like a tomato vegetable company, and they did uh, like 32 million, and they're still with that company, and that's for revenues for annual basis with uh, vegetables and then uh like let's look into the the company they say they want to do the potential to become one of the largest licensed producers of cannabis in canada zenabis is proud to provide medical and recreational cannabis from coast to coast so 
I've been eyeing these guys like I was waiting for them to IPO straight up back. I don't before the IPO. I want to get just after I saw Tilray. I was thinking to myself, I'm like Zenibus is a good good name. That's a good branding. I think it'll do well. And I bought and sold and I made a, made a bit of money on it when it went to like six or seven bucks. And it's trading um, it's trading at 367. Oh yeah, so uh, Kush Bottles is, is trading at 601 and MedMen's trading at 397, which is pretty low for MedMen. Um, and Xena's pretty low for the last few months. It's at pretty low. And then uh, they also have a deal with uh, a true kombucha. So kombucha is pretty popular among like millennials. So they got a deal for to make a uh, create cultured tea, beverage, CBD, or THC product, right? So that could be very popular in the adult um, infused beverage kind of uh, space that comes online at the end of the year. Uh, I'd probably say like I, I purchased a bit of their few of the strains too. It's, it's some good cannabis. I'd say I'm, I'm gonna think that on their cannabis business they're probably doing somewhere around like three to four million right now. And then um, but they're gonna be huge. They they have enough space when they get everything retrofit to be about three million square feet. They just picked up a credit facility for fifty one million to. Uh, just keep keep expanding and I, I like the CEO there's some military guy on there that's pretty much working for free other than uh, stock options so it's enticement for him to to make the company global big player and make mad money so I picked him as number eight number seven uh, company people don't really talk about and uh, I actually just sent them an email. I doubt they'll give me an email back just because companies, I don't know, they're not very good with investor relations stuff straight up. That's my opinion. Maybe I, maybe they just see my email. They don't want to respond. I don't know. It beats me. But uh, M. Jardine Group, they're, what are they? Number three. Yeah, they're the number 12 uh, highest U.S. dollar reporting company. Uh, they, they're on the CSC, and they did $7 million, and they're going to be reporting April 30th, right? Okay, so they're trading at 429 So the reason why I think they're going to be a good pick for March, potentially, somewhere around like $4 maybe, is there's high insider ownership, fairly low float. This company is, people don't really understand, but they... They have a lot of experience operating cannabis companies. Um, yeah, the, the, I think they make money just operating. So say they could be operating a cannab canopy facility and the canopy facility maybe makes $100 million for the year and they end up getting maybe like 10 or $25 million for the year. I think that's how their works. I got to look into it further, but um, I, fi I figure they're a good pick. I I've been meaning to pick them up. Um, I just haven't gone around to it. I probably would pick up like 50 to 60. I don't think I'd go that big on them. Um, me personally, I just, I like them a lot. I just don't, I don't know. There's other picks that, that are above it. But um, but yeah, I picked them as number seven. I think they're very undervalued versus a lot of companies in space. And you can look at their website, Andrew Dean, if you want to find out more information. And uh, yeah, they're, they're very high insider um, ownership and just the fact that nobody really talks about them and they have a lot of experience and they're a global company. So they're my number seven pick. My number six pick is Friday Night Inc, right? So Friday Night Inc is a company I once owned 35,000 shares at around uh, like 22 cents average straight up. I didn't I didn't make the run all the way to like a buck 30 or something however it went I sold off all my shares around like 65 that's like one of my last shares I had so I made some decent money but I could have made a lot more money on that and uh, but I was a, a that was a really good buy uh, Braden Sutton and the company's like been doing good ever since even when when I first bought them they were making a million dollars per quarter per month I think in the first month of 
recreational in Vegas. And they're do they're just why I picked them as number six. I just picked up a thousand shares at fifty two cents. They don't have that many shares out about close to two hundred million shares out. But the fact that the company's got Spire Logistics, uh, they got Corrupt Moon Rocks, they they got all these um, celebrities like MMA. Um, the list goes on. This company is valued. Like it's got a lot going for it. Um, another reason is CB1. The the guy this guy's worked for uh, Jim Cramer. He's he's working with them now. And I think like a, as a strategic advisor or something like that. I, I don't remember, but that gives me confidence in the company. I like that guy from CB1. Uh, he uh, basically why I'm also super bullish on 1933 Industries TJF F in America and TGIF in Canada is because they make serious revenues, 4.6 million, and this is just out of a 22,000 square feet facility. Um, like they have their own 12,000 square feet facility and then they work out of like another five or 10,000 across the street, but they're building 67,000 square feet and apparently it's really close to getting done. So when that's done, say in a month or two, like completion, you just think about like, tw that's going to be more efficient eventually. So, uh, if they're doing like four to 5 million right now, just with 22,000 square feet, if they had th three times, they would be doing closer to like 17 to 20 million per quarter. Excuse me. And that's a pretty significant number. Um, I think they're very, they're very well managed. Then they have the Spire Logistics Security and they, they have a Infuse MFG too. So we don't know what things they may roll out. I, I'm going to put a, my speculator hat on and say that, well, they're doing CBD hemp and stuff, but with all these big farmers, um, like they can get a lot of bulk material and put their label on it and I don't know what, make it into different um, products. So I think Braden Sutton's got something up his sleeve as far as that goes. And that could be, very lucrative for the business. So that's my number six pick. Uh, number five is uh, Sprott Resource Holdings. Uh, it's a copper play. I, I didn't put it, I'll just write it down. So, so this is the company. They're trading at 153. Uh, I, I own warrants in the company. I think I bought them like around here for 0. Zero, like half a penny, and I bought over a hundred thousand warrants, and the strike price is six sixty. So anything after six sixty will be money. So I look at I, the reason why I was interested in it is because because there's three years on those warrants, and uh, with the fact that copper price they own it, this this mine. Uh, and they're going to be cash flow positive. They have cash. And I bought it when it was like a 35 million market cap. And the price to book was like 0 0.25. It's it's around like 0 0.35. So I can see this thing going to four bucks. Um, yeah, so I have three years on these warrants. Like say, say the company goes to eight to ten dollars. I paid half a penny. My warrants will be worth over a dollar. Like they could be worth up to two or three dollars. And I paid half a penny. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they're my number five pick. Uh, you can buy the, the stock, SRHI, or you can buy the, the warrants, SRHI warrants. And they have a three year time limit, I think. 2022 sometime I don't know exact the exact date but that's enough time for me um, they base it on 275 dollars per pound copper and right now it's around like 2.95 so say that copper goes to like 354 this company is gonna be so much more profitable so yeah that's my number I pick number four is the tragically hit new strike brands ticker hit 
Uh, I own a lot of warrants in this company straight up. And I like the company a lot. I think there's so much stuff going for it. It has TSX hit, uh, OTC NWKRF, uh, 3.4 million last quarter. And they're going to be reporting pretty soon. I, I, they, that's April 30th, but I think it'll be sometime before that. And that's what I'm hearing from people I talk to in the Facebook groups. Uh, yes, yeah, so basically, they're my number four pick because they're trading around 45 cents. They got, they got about 550 million shares out. Uh, Kronos Group did 3.8 million and they got their money from El Trio, right? That's fair. So they're worth 5 billion. So they're worth 20 times what New Strike is. So I don't know. They're, when the report, I can see that New Strike being very similar to Kronos. And New Strike's got, I, I got a video um, dedicated solely to New Strike brands. So I mean, you can check out my videos if you want to learn more about New Strike brands. Uh, but basically, they have a Johnson & Johnson uh, marketing lady that's working with the companies. And she worked for TWE Estates that does Penfold Wines and other things. And they're doing, uh, like, they're working on, on Edible Line with Neil Brothers. Like, this is a family brother's that have a very popular business for just uh, food. You can get salsa, chips, and all stuff. I got a video on the Neil Brothers and the Hip. It's a small five five minute video, and it just goes through all the pictures of, of what the food looks like and stuff. But basically, I think that could be very awesome with the edibles line. They got deal with labs, Metaform Labs, so they can do concentrates, edibles, capsules, oils, vape pens, the list goes on, infused beverages. And that's what they have in their um, presentation. And you got to look at the Tragically Hit. They are a renowned company around Canada being very popular. Uh, they hit close to $3 when they were trying to get, uh, they were almost bought by Canamed. I think this company, I don't know when they're reporting exactly, but I could see them being very close to 10 million. I mean, maybe they only do six to 10, but that's a significant jump quarter over quarter. And before you know it, they're gonna be up at similar revenues that Cantrust has or OGI and Afria has. Uh, I could see that happening as close as the end of the year so that's why I like HIP and uh, they're my number four pick. Uh, my number three pick is uh, Harvest One HVT on the TSX uh, V. And Harvest One just reported their revenues for uh, last quarter and it was awesome. It was absolutely awesome. I own a lot of warrants in this company and I bought them when the price to book was somewhere like 0 0.5. It was retarded really low. They had lots of cash. They had like 48 million cash. And the market cap was going for 55 million. I was like, yeah, let's do this shit. So basically, Harvest One, you know, it's been really good to me. Um, but it's just getting started. I, I can see amazing things for this company uh, with its market cap. Uh yeah, 63 cents is, is trading for, and why, uh, so there's a lot of people, like Tom the Trader, he's been talking about uh, North, he loves the company, and they got their outdoor grow, and I love them and all that, they're good, I don't own any shares, but basically, they did uh, 2.4 million, but you see, like Harvest One, they did 3.7 million, so they beat them, I mean, maybe North will will beat them at the end of the year when they got their outdoor grow or something like that. But um, there's a lot of things that Harvest One's doing. They're doing, they're a global company. They're exporting capsules in Australia already, and they're going to be in Europe. They're already in Europe, I mean, and they have vape pens they're working on with uh, Valens Grow Works. And 
there's there's just so much stuff. They they have um, premium flour, so you got other companies that may be brewing again five or six dollars per gram. This company's probably getting like eight dollars per gram or nine or ten dollars per gram that they sell to the provinces. So yeah, there's a lot of things going for Harvest One. It's uh, it's an undervalued marijuana company in my honest opinion, and uh, it could go on a crazy run. I could see it going to a buck fifty. 250 by the end of the year i mean again that's just my opinion do your own due diligence okay so that's my number three pick uh and we're getting into the last two and another number one baby baby so let's do this uh number two is national access cannabis which is a uh, nacnf in america and tsxv um meta so uh, and they did 3.8 million last quarter, and that wasn't for a full three months of reporting for the rec market. And uh, they're going to be reporting in end of April apparently. But uh, the reason why I picked them as, my, as number two is the retail market is a big sector. Uh, it's very big. People are us underestimating the retail. I've looked into it, Inner Spirit Holdings, and I like the company when it was at like 13 cents, but the fact that uh, they're only gonna get 6% of every franchise, and National Access Cannabis has the most stores in Canada. I don't know exactly, they have only like 30 stores right now, and they might have like 100 stores at the end of the year. So if you think about it in terms of growth, this company is going to be growing crazy. You could see, so let's just do an estimate. Maybe every store does like 2.5, 2 to 5 million per year. And they, at the end of the year, then they have like 60 stores. They're going to do 122. Yeah, they're going to do a lot of money. They could do up to 300 million with 60 stores. And if they have a hundred stores, they could do 200 to 500 million. So that's almost a half a billion. So, uh, the, and the profit margins are pretty good on retail. So you look at the big players in the USA. Let's look at it. Okay. So you got MedMen, they're a big retail player. True Leaf, big retail player. Cure Leaf, big retail player. Green Thumb Industries, big retail player. Those are all the big dogs. Yeah, these some of these companies, they all have cultivation as well. But they're making a lot of money at retail. You got MPX as well uh, that turned into Anthus. Uh, I think Harvest Health as well has dispensaries. Uh, Diony Med works with uh, dispensaries. They deliver and they're also branding and stuff so I mean that's all it's all connected but it's not the same thing as what Meta's doing uh, Acres Holdings wants to do uh, dispensaries uh, Planet 13 almost 5 million last quarter and they're big in Vegas retail retail it's the same thing so and these companies have gone crazy they've gone up to like three dollars Planet 13 um, some of these other ones, like Acreage, has gone up to $25, Green Thumb's gone up to $30, uh, and then we got National Access Cannabis going for $0.70. Cents. I think I could have bought this share at $0.46 cents back in December. That would have been a still. So I don't know why I didn't think of them earlier. I just basically was, was sleeping on them, had other things on my mind, but... I'm awakened to the fact that retail is going to be big in 2019 and we're just touching the surface and the more stores that are open uh, for these companies, the more revenue and every province is just branching out. So say in BC, maybe there's eight stores right now. Come end of 2019, there could be 50 or 100 stores. Like you don't know how fast these could grow. And then say like 2021 or 2020, there could be 150 to 250 stores or close to 300 stores across the whole province. So if 
and then just across so many other provinces, Ontario, Quebec, Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and if National Access Cannabis gets the lion's share, that's that's a word I've been hearing a lot, so I'm going to use it. Uh, say they get like 20% of the whole retail market. So if they're saying that the, uh, in Canada, the whole rec market could be p potentially like $8 billion, then if they get 20%, that's huge. That's uh, $1.6 billion revenues. Like, that's that's a big effing player. And you can get it, that stock for $0.63 cents or, or $0.70, cents and I think there's like 150 million shares out. So, I don't know. It's like 100 million market cap, maybe 120. And this company could potentially do like 200 million it's, it's going to be a big name, and there's already big companies that have invested in this. Xenobis invested in this company. I think Oxley, Tilray might have. But they're working also with us, uh, Second Cup for their stores. So I picked up 500 shares today of Meta. I believe in this company. I, I listened to him on my letter, the CEO, I believe. I, I can tell that company's gonna do good revenue straight up. I can see them doing next quarter maybe like 10 to 15 million by the sounds of it for sure. And come in the later of the year, they could be up to like 30 to 45 million per quarter. Who knows? The, the sky is really the limit. Okay, so enough of that. So now we're gonna get into Tilt Holdings, all right? So Tilt Holdings, uh, yeah, I'm using Maya's ladder a lot. <laughs> they reported 18.3 million USD in revenue for the month of January. And what we need to uh, learn about that is the number does not reflect sales of cannabis products and infused products, which Coleman states, that's I think the, yeah, the CEO, are just coming online. 18.3 million in a month. And you can buy this stock for two dollars and ninety-three cents, and it's got about two hundred million shares out. They got like forty million dollars of cash, and yeah, they're they're big. They're, I picked up a hundred shares a few weeks ago. I think that Tilt. Yeah, if you don't know about Tilt, I suggest you look into Tilt. T I L T on in Canada and SVVTF in America. Um, the, the CEO, he sounds very confident. Uh, that's the guy. Listen to him. Uh, I mean, they're, they're doing some good things. They're doing focus on research, development, distribution, and sale. Uh, technology, software, and services, and an infrastructure for cannabis products products and devices okay so 18.3 million per month if and that's in US dollars like you times that by 12 and they're supposed they're estimated I think like 400 million for 2019 <laughs> that's that's ginormous okay so and you can get this stock for two dollars and ninety three cents <laughs> and they they could be potentially be the number one cannabis revenue earner in all of 2019 above canopy aurora uh medman yeah the tilt tilt people are sleeping on uh they're my number one pick you can do a lot more research on this company uh they're only gonna get bigger and they're only gonna dominate more then they'll be on those list that's a month they, they do that for three months and that's not even cannabis sales They'll be at 54 million. They'll almost be double what Medman's uh, at, and Medman's trading for four bucks. Uh, and this is just USA. If they move to Canada and they go global, the oh, the the list goes on. The potential for that. So you just think about it. The fact that in a few years this company could be making a billion dollars, maybe two billion. Oh, the sky's the limit for Tilt, I think. I just recently learned about them. I wish I knew more, but with the knowledge I know about them, I trust that they're going to do great things, and my money's okay buying in at like 
I don't know, eight cents maybe. They're up to like 335 and then they just drop down to 293, but I don't know. Maybe they go lower, maybe they go to 250 or two, but I cannot see this this going below two dollars or like under a dollar. Like that would be if they do, I'll buy it, I'll buy a lot more for sure. Because I think uh, I'll get my money back and a lot more. So those are my top 10 picks for March 2019. And we're going to get into the 2019 March by tomorrow. So get your juicy, you know, get ready for this March. I hope it's a great month. Tesla just uh, announced they got a cheap model, $35,000 US for uh, one of their models that they're going to mass produce. So I don't know, be interesting, I guess, with Tesla. Anyways, that's enough um, me rambling on. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Give me a thumbs down if you dislike the video. And subscribe for future content and information. And until next time, peace.